Hey everybody, welcome back to Furniture Flipping Teacher. I'm Lauren and we are in much need of an entertainment center. So in today's video, Neiman and I are going to be flipping an entertainment center for our living room, as well as finishing it up and giving it some final touches, adding a rug and some curtains. Let's get into it. As you can see, we've just got this shelf here because we're right in the middle of moving and truly, Neiman and I have never really had an entertainment area, so we've never had an entertainment center. I was browsing Facebook Marketplace for an entertainment center that was longer than the TV and not too high, but not too short, and I wanted it to really fit the vibe in here, which is sort of that mid-century modern and some of the cooler, but yet, darker colors. So I found the perfect piece and I'm so excited to get to it. But first I wanted to thank Anchor for sponsoring this video and we'll get to them in just a little bit. So let's head outside and get to the piece. So here is this beautiful piece and here is our little makeshift workshop that we've got right now. It doesn't have any power in it, but we are going to make do with what we've got. I got this piece for $115 off of Facebook Marketplace, which is a bit more than I would typically spend if I were flipping it for a profit. But since it is for my own home, $115 for this very solid wood piece was just incredible. And once I'm done with it, it will look like a much more expensive piece than that. Let's go ahead and remove the hardware. All right, I got all the hardware off and then I just went ahead and removed the doors as well because I just think it'll be a lot easier for me to clean it out and then also achieve the design plan. I'm gonna get all of this put aside so we can clean. Not that I would ever skip cleaning a piece whenever I flip it, but now it's even more important because it's going inside our house and look how dirty this is. It is pretty dusty. So I'm just using Dawn dish soap and we're gonna go ahead and get all that dust and grime off so that it will be nice and clean and that the paint can adhere really well to the surface. Oh, I love these little beads. I used to play with these all the time and you put them all together and then you iron them to make something. It's time for me to sand this piece down. We're just gonna do a scuff sand, but that's where today's sponsor comes in, Anchor. As you guys know, we are in the middle of a big move and that means that my tools are everywhere. So I'm gonna be using this sander here, but along with my tools being everywhere, we're having to utilize a temporary space for our workshop. And like I said, it doesn't really have that much electricity or ports or outlets for me to utilize to plug in my tools. That is where this Anchor 757 portable power station comes in. As you can see here on the front, it's got about six different outlets for cords, as well as several different USBs and so much more than that. What I'm gonna be utilizing it for very first is my sander. So I'm gonna get us all loaded up and we're gonna plug it in and see how it works. 
I'm using a 120 grit sandpaper here on my orbital sander, but I wanted to talk to you just a little bit more about the anchor. It has 1500 watts of power, as well as just under 1300 watt hours, which basically in layman's terms means that you'll be able to fully charge this battery about 3,000 times before its capacity begins to dwindle down. I'm excited to see how many watts this uses while I'm actually sanding, because that will pop up right here on the screen. So you're able to tell what the charge of the battery is right here on the screen by just pushing the display button. And then it's got a car socket button to turn that outlet on. And then it's got the AC outlets right here. So we're gonna turn that on so that we can make sure that this plug-in is the one that is getting the electricity. So I'm gonna put my RZ mask on for safety and we're gonna try this out. If I kept using this sander, I would have seven hours remaining on this battery life and this is how many watts are being used as this sander is on. We're still at 100% on our Anchor portable power station. That's awesome. So I'm done with the scuff sanding. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and wipe down all of that dust with my microfiber cloth. Just prepping for paint. I don't wanna get any paint on the inside of this cabinet. So I'm just using some plastic with tape on the edge to go ahead and block that off so that no paint gets in there. I'm gonna just keep it this nice wood color. It's really nothing's wrong with it, so I'd rather keep it wood. All right, it's paint time. I'm gonna be using my Home Right Super Finish Max, which is just a $100 sprayer, super affordable. I'll link it down below in the description. If you're nervous about spraying, I've also got a whole video and we'll also put that link down there as well. So I'm gonna be using In the Navy by Dixie Bell. It's a nice navy dark blue and it's really going to be the closest color that I found that is going to go with the accent wall that we painted in the living room. It's gonna be on the opposite wall, so I figured it would be awesome to tie it in, and plus the curtains and the rug. I cannot wait for this to come together. Dixie Belle's paint is a bit on the thicker side, so I always tend to just go ahead and pour some water in there just to thin it out a little bit, and that'll really help it go through the sprayer as well. My sprayer only has about a foot long cord, so I've got an extension cord that I'm gonna plug it into. And then we're gonna plug the extension cord into the anchor. So not only does it have the two prongs, but it's also got the ones that need the three prongs. So basically any type of outlet you can think of is on this portable power station. All right, so we're, we're at 99% battery after doing the sanding, and we're gonna see what using the sprayer does to this battery life. All right, I tested it out, got a pretty good flow, so we're ready to spray. Super quick paint job. The first coat is done. 
and we're gonna let that dry and we'll come back for coat number two. In the meantime, we wanna talk just a tad bit more about Anchor. With the ergonomic dual grip design, the portable power station can be easily carried around despite its weight because this thing is Heavy. Neiman and I are so excited to have something like this in our arsenal because we absolutely love to go traveling and especially camping. So to be able to have this with us with all these plugins, he'll be able to charge his cameras and we'll be able to charge all of our tools that are necessary for camping. But not only that, this thing is also great for at home. It can charge small appliances such as plugging in a mini fridge, things like that. Or if your power goes out for for a little while, up to three to five days, this thing will stay charged and it kind of acts as an, a backup generator, if you will. So this little power station, well, it's, it's little, but it is a powerhouse. Not only that, but just like you saw me using it with my sander and my sprayer, I think that this is gonna be perfect for us as we're in between this transition point where I'll still be able to work and flip outside until we get into our workshop that has a little bit more of that electricity in there this is going to be absolutely perfect and I thought of something that would be great for some of you guys to utilize. A lot of the times we get questions about, you know, I live in this one bedroom apartment or I don't really have the space for flipping. But if you have any sort of outdoor area, whether it is a small garage or just a little flat patio on the back of your apartment, something like this Anchor 757 Powerhouse is perfect for you because you'll be able to plug in your sander here, even if you don't have access to electricity in those spaces, this can give you just that. Up until now, we've only used 3% of this powerhouse. It's crazy how little energy those things took out of this battery. We've got it for a long time to come. And one awesome feature of this powerhouse is that when it does get down to 0%, it only takes an hour to get charged all the way up to 80%. So when we're on the road or when we're between sandings and it's running low, we can just go plug it in for under an hour and it's already going to be over half way charged. Thank you so much to Anchor for sponsoring this video. Let's get back for coat number two. Before I do spray the second coat though, I'm gonna grab my 320 grit sandpaper and just smooth it out. It's such a smooth finish already due to spraying the paint, but I'm gonna get an even better smoother finish if I do one little quick sand in between each coat. <laughs> number two so we're gonna let that dry and then we'll come back for top coat I love the fact that this is portable because I don't have a workbench but I'm gonna use this fence and again no outlet over here so I'm just going to go ahead and plug my sander in over here we're gonna sand these doors down to the raw wood and see what comes of it my surf prep <laughs> holy cow that probably took me like three times the amount of time and I'm not even done I still got to go back with the 120 grit so that I can stain on a smoother surface but I am ready to go top coat so that can dry while I finish sanding these for the top coat I when I'm spraying especially I like to just leave the extra paint in there and then I will just go ahead and pour the top coat in and that way the extra paint will help tint the top coat 
because when I'm using a darker color, I really like to tint it to just really eliminate any sort of cloudiness or streaks. With the spray, you're not really gonna get streaks, but the, it really helps with the cloudiness. So it'll basically be like I'm spraying on the same color in a top coat. next day and we are ready for some stain on these door fronts so these are the ones that go on the front of the media console and they open and I went ahead and sanded them down I started with that 80 grit and then did a hundred to get all of the rest of the black off and then we went ahead and did a 220 grit just to smooth everything out so that they're even and that they'll take the stain really well now, I have been really excited to use this product here and it's by Lily Moon Paint. I've used their paint a lot, but recently they came out with some water-based gel stains, which they've got six colors and I have got them all right here, but I've already picked out the one that I am going to be using and it is called Tennessee Whiskey. It's actually, they're called Old Smoky Gel Stains, you guys. They're based in Tennessee. They've got amazing branding. I just think it's so cool how they tie it all into either Lily Moon or Tennessee and just, it, it's really, really neat. So if you haven't checked out Lily Moon Paint, you can also use my code FFT10 for 10% off of your order and all of the links to every product I've used in this video will be down below in the description. All I'm going to do is use this applicator pad here we're going to get the surface just a bit wet with this mister. And the reason that I chose the Tennessee Whiskey is because it's the closest that I found of their stains that will match the legs on our couch, which are the walnut color. So that is why I chose this brown color as opposed to anything darker or lighter. But they've got a pretty good array of different colors of these stains. So I'm just gonna add it to my applicator pad. And then I'm gonna go in the same direction of the green of the wood all the way across. I love this too because it is it has the top coat in it already. So I don't need to worry about any sort of top coat on these. Once this is dry, we're good to go. This is the original color, this dark brown wood. And this is still on the inside of the doors. I'm just gonna leave it. And this is the new color. So I think this really lightens it up a lot and it's really gonna complement the nice navy blue. Just a little bit lighter since this dark, dark brown would kind of just all be so dark. So glad I lightened it up. We're gonna let this dry. In the meantime, I think we're gonna go ahead and get the rug set out and then bring the piece in to assemble it. Looks great and it's not even put together all the way yet. All right, I'm gonna go grab the hardware and we're gonna put this thing together. Time to peel off the tape and the plastic. So satisfying. One thing I made sure of when I was taping and putting the plastic on is to tape wherever the door is going to rub against because I have noticed over the couple years I've been doing this that paint when it rubs surface to surface with doors or drawers it just rubs off over time and so a lot of the times I'll try just not to paint the parts that are going to rub so up here on the side here down below and on this side I know that the door is going to be going in and out so I just like to try and leave those not painted if at all possible. Let's get it put together. <laughs> like I said, this already has got the top coat built in, so I'm done with these door fronts and they're already drying, really quick drying. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and put them on. matter which one which door 
This one's definitely not fitting, and this one's too small for this hole. Oh, freaking hate it when that happens. This is why you put your, you label, you put them in the right spot. I had them all laid out in the right spot so I knew which one went where, and then Neiman went and was helping me, and he grabbed them all and put them in a pile so then I didn't know which one was which. I really didn't think it mattered for these two, but clearly it does. So now I get to go ahead and take them all down or back off and put them back on in the right spot. It's time to go ahead and hang the curtains and finish this room off. I went to Target and grabbed some of the same curtain rods that we have in our bedroom. I just really love the way that they look on the wall and we're ready to go ahead and hang them. Thanks to all of your guys' suggestions on our last video, I picked these up off of Amazon, and I think that they're the perfect mixture of like an off-white creamy beige color with the blue that matches up to our wall over here, the accent wall. So I'm really excited to see them hung in their position. Let's do it. Curtains are hung and this place is finally starting to feel like home. I think this piece is the perfect piece for the center of this room. It fits perfectly under our TV, matches the wall greatly. And you guys, in the past three days, I have just had so much fun just truly, again, making this a home. Of course, there's some little touches here and there that we've got to do. We've got to hang art, you know, add some more decorations, but it is coming together and I couldn't be more excited. Of course, I just want to thank Anchor one more time for helping me complete this piece while we're in between workshops and temporary places with not much electricity. We're excited to use that power station for our travels, maybe for some upcoming flips while we're still in this position. But you guys, I have just had so much fun making this house our home between the bedroom, the living room, so much more fun things to come. I love doing this type of thing. And I also love incorporating a furniture flip because getting back to our roots is something that we enjoy doing and i know that you guys do as well so if you're interested in watching more house content more furniture content over at our other house our airbnb content we've got some amazing things coming up and we're super excited so again get subscribed down below turn on that bell notification so you know whenever we upload a video thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you on the flip side Thank you.